Support WrestleTalk! Visit WrestleTalk.com It's NXT TakeOver War Games predictions time. I'm Ollie Davis, this is El Fakador Laurie Blake, and that is the other one Luke Owen. It's a three-man booth, and not only that, this is the first of a new idea, which might fail spectacularly, but we won't know because we're going to record all these things in one chunk, and we're, we're just going to have to stick with it. We may forget <laughs> about it come Royal Rumble. Wrestle League. So, we are just going to tally up all the predictions in between big the big five pay-per-views and the person with the most correct match predictions and overall predictions is the winner. You guys can take part two. The website writers are going to get involved. But really, we're it's, the three that matter. Thing. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And so, to clarify, because when Ollie explained this to me earlier, it didn't make a whole mess of sense. Luke wasn't listening. But it is every pay-per-view we are going to do predictions for, <coughs> and those predictions, the correct predictions, will tally up into the table. However, it's only really... I don't want to say important, because it's always important. But any time a big five pay-per-view happens, that's Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series, the loser, the uh, person who's bottom, will then have to do a music video to a wrestler's theme song. Oh. Because we quite... Well, I say we enjoy doing them. I hated doing mine. But, we, you know... You, They're a pain. I you like sign them. up for any of this. Yeah, well, yeah, you like them, so it's fine. That's the main thing. So that is wrestling. It's savage, isn't it? What a savage punishment. Brutal. And maybe someone who is top gets like a, I don't know, a belt or something. Maybe. We haven't thought that far ahead. Yeah. Uh, and it includes New Japan, Impact, all kinds of predictions. Yes. But first, we have NXT TakeOver War Games. Take it away, Luke. Yes, yeah, so it's War Games 2018 from Los Angeles. Uh, we have got a four-match card. However, we are going to add in the match that will be taped before the show that will then air next week. So we will know who wins on that because it will have happened. Uh, and that is... Four matches. It's a treat. Isn't it, Jess? But one, half hours, that main matches. event is going to go long. <laughs> Uh, and that match, which will take place next Wednesday, but will be taped on Saturday, is Matthew Riddle versus Cassius Ono. Uh, Ollie Davis, you the guy who does not watch NXT or Cassius. does not watch our reviews or does not take part in our reviews. So what are your thoughts? Well, that's why it's going to be all the more sweeter when I predict everything right and you get it, I don't know, two out of five or whatever it is. Sweet. I'd yes. be happy with two out of five. <laughs> My normal hit rate is real bad. So. That would be so much better than what I did at Evolution when I did very poorly. So Matt Riddle, this is his debut match? On TakeOver. On TakeOver. Well, actually, it won't be on TV. It'll be on TV next week. So he's yeah. already had a TV match. So technically, it's his second TV match. And he won match. that one. Yeah. yeah. But this is against Cassius Ono, Cash. the man to put people over, despite being like one of the best all-round style wrestlers in the world. He's just used as to make someone... they. He's used to make the next guy look good. He's yeah. a look-good machine. Mm. Yeah, that's it. He's a showcase guy. It's what Velveteen Dream was doing before he got over. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and I th obviously I think Matt Riddle's going to win, but I think this is going to be this is going to rival Alexander and Murphy for slaps. Oh yeah, because big few slaps. people like Cassius Ono is so good at making those huge slapping noises off his elbows and kicks, as is the Bro King, King, King of, of Bros. bros. Bro King is a Pokemon. <laughs> he's he's Bro King Matt the, Hardy. <laughs> the reader of uh, Russell Talk Magazine, Matthew Riddle. Yeah. Mm. yeah. At the Russell Talk Magazine featured you in a. That? We in don't a, know he's read it. He's probably using it to write There are blogs multiple or something. issues there, though. So maybe he's a, a subscriber. Maybe. Um, but there are, there are a maybe couple he's of using issues it as on kindling. his desk. It's because we keep sending them to him. <laughs> They're going to pile up somewhere. <laughs> what about you, Fakador? I mean, it's fairly obvious, isn't it? I don't. I think. I feel like it's there's a four. Ono, right? Yeah, it's Ono. <laughs> You go with Riddle. I'm going it's with Riddle. It's a hot start yeah. to the competition. Uh, yeah. I am also going for Matthew Riddle uh, in this. However, I was just thinking then, and maybe I'll say this just to be different. I may go with Cassius Ono because of Keith Lee interference, and then you start a Ooh. Keith Lee Matt Riddle feud. Ooh, but they were best buds the other week. I know. They were um, basking in each other's it's glory. Like, it's like Ember Remember? Moon and Nia Jax Remember? all over again. Yeah. Just best mates one week. And a heel the heel the circle next. glory they were having. I think that might be the most marky thing you've ever said. <laughs> that was marky <laughs> mark, and I don't think that's going to happen. Are we the funky bunch, or are you the yeah, funky? No, bunch? no, no. no. You, I, no we're not. Win. I'm not. I'm not the funky. I'm not involved. <laughs> so you're Donny. <laughs> sure, yeah. Donny Wahlberg. <laughs> uh, I'm. I may. I'll stick with Matthew Riddle for now. But if I'm wrong, then I'll be annoyed. 
Uh, next up, we have got the NXT Women's Championship being decided in a two out of three falls match between Shayna Baszler and Kyrie Sane, the former NXT Women's Champion who lost her title at Evolution due to some dastardly interference from Baszler's Get new all. stable mates, Marina Shafir and Jasmine Duke. Not Duke. Mm. Not Duke. You can't I'm say Duke. 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 We're British, which is why yeah. we say Duke. Go Duke, for a Duke. Duke. As in a Dukey. It's Duke. So it's Duke, Dukey, like the Green Day album. Yeah. Uh, Laurie Blake, we're going to come to you first. Oh, you so, uh, I feel like it's so hard to choose. I feel like it's probably a bit too early for Shayna to lose the title now she's got a stable with her. But I also feel like we could be seeing, like, maybe Io Shirai comes out here and makes the save with Zane. Mm. I don't know. Like, this is why I'm, this is why I'm torn, because I also feel like we want to start positioning Shayna and that lot to go and help Ronda out at some point. But obviously the news that Becky and Ronda might be at WrestleMania means that that's probably not happening for a little while yet anyway. So I think, it was an undercard I thing. think I'm going to go for... Baszler? You're going with Baszler. And it's tough, Cause isn't I, it? Because she's great. She is awesome. She is She is a license to print money. Mm. But I've said that a lot about NXT, guys, and look where we are now. Mm. Um, I am going to go with Kyrie Sane. Ooh. Ooh. At first split. Yes, I'm going to say uh, You're just gonna go the with a pirate belt. princess. <laughs> Um, because I feel like the, the people that they're setting up as like future contenders for the NXT Women's Championship are all heels, like Bianca mm. Belair and Lacey Evans. So I think that maybe Kyrie Sane's going to pick up the win here to be our babyface champion. Um, granted, I thought she was going to win at Evolution, and look how that worked out for me. But I do agree mm. with you. It, al- it, it almost feels too soon for Baszler to lose the title, considering she's now got new mates. Yes. Uh, but I'm going to stick new with besties. Kyrie Sane. Yeah. Refresh my memory, because of course I watch NXT all the time. Love your reviews, big fans of it. Thanks. Uh, Be- Bianca Belair is a is a heel, is a babyface. Yes. I think. See, I don't. I think she's. I think she's she sits somewhere. Feet, I think she sits somewhere in the middle. That she's <laughs> yeah. not. She doesn't cheat. No. She's just very uh, cocky about winning. So I don't actually think so she's Becky Lynch. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I, th- I don't think she's. That's probably my disagreement with you there. Is that she's probably not a heel. Mm. She's just a very. Very Co- confident, cocksure. very mm. confident baby face. So I feel like she's going to probably be the. It doesn't matter who wins really for her because she can still be the number one contender. I just think if this was EWR, that amazing database uh, management game where you booked wrestling shows, I think she'd be classified as a heel. Mm. But that's because you've only got binary choices. <laughs> exactly. I, I'm going to I'm going to go with Shayna Baszler. Although I can mm. see the merit of Baszler losing here and then effectively being called up through the Survivor Series for horsewomen shenanigans. You know, Becky and... Well, I'm kind of giving away my Survivor Series predictions here, but Sasha Banks and Bailey don't have anything to do on the show. Becky will be in Charlotte's Corner, presumably. Ronda's going to be awful lonely out there. Mm. Uh, so I do think... But, you know, maybe she doesn't have to lose the title for that to happen. Yes, very true. And you can, you can actually create a... Not just the one time a year when Raw and SmackDown go head-to-head... Put a bit of NXT in there as well. Yeah, it's, a menage a trois. It's really funny as well, because you know we make a lot of fun of like it's the one time of year when Raw and SmackDown go head to head direct competition, despite the fact that it happened at the World Cup and at Evolution. Mixed match challenges are still going on, and those are Raw versus SmackDown matches. Oh, yeah. No, yeah they're, 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 Raw versus, they're Raw versus SmackDown dance breaks. <laughs> what, what a weird thing to suddenly enter continuity and have stakes. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever wins this gets the last spot in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. Ooh, you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, up next, we have got a blood feud. Who ran over Alistair Black? It was only bloody Johnny Gargano. It is Alistair Black versus Johnny Gargano. Uh, Gargano is a heel now, but he's a heel who believes he is a babyface, which makes him absolutely fascinating. Whereas Alistair Black is looking to get his revenge for Johnny Gargano attacking him backstage. Uh, Oliver Davis, where are you sitting on this? Uh, or, I'm, or is it my turn uh, to go first? Well, I see this as a number one contendership positioning match. Of course, black former champion. Gargano has not held that yet, but he's got this long-running blood feud with Champa. So I think the money would be in Gargano winning to set up another Champa gargano match. I don't know how that plays out, though, with their respective moralities at the moment. Uh, and then you have that payoff at the January TakeOver show, which I believe would be one year since Champa returned mm. and bash Gargano on the back yeah. after the Almas match. That's a match. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's yeah. 
Uh, so I'm going to go Johnny Gargano. But this is like credit to NXT booking. I love whatever happens here. Mm. That's that's good booking. Or there are multiple good things that can spin out <laughs> from this. <laughs> as opposed to WWE ones where you can only see bad and they somehow go worse. Mm. Yeah. Like Shane McMahon winning the... Get into that again. Surprise! We'll, we'll save that for tomorrow's prediction video. I am also going to go with uh, Jonathan Gargano. Johnny Jonathan Gargano. Jonathan Jonathan's. I've written JB. I meant to write JG. <laughs> Um, for similar reasons, JTG. I think this is a feud that you can extend out. You don't need to end this one here. Ergo, you don't mm. need to have Alistair Black get his revenge right now. Ergo. That's right. Oh, yeah. I Vis a vis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used Kel Surprise in our yeah, did, yeah. review. It's been a very linguistic day. <laughs> What's Kel Surprise? Is that a drink? Oh, yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the cousin of Limoncello. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think this is a few that you can extend out much further than just this one show. Uh, as Ollie said, you can take this into next year. So I'm going to go with Jonathan. I am very torn. Uh, mm. I think Like Natalie Imbruglia. I am like Natalie Imbruglia, torn, lying broken on the floor. Uh, I think Black has a lot to lose here in terms of his mystique before he was injured, before he was attacked by Johnny Gargano, was that he was undefeated, essentially. And then he had the Champa match where Johnny interrupted. He gets pinned. He loses the belt. He was a monster before that. If he loses here without some sort of massive amount of shenanigans, I would be like, he, that's kind of destroying his mystique slightly here. However, I do feel all the story is about Johnny really here. So I think Limoncello, I'm just going to go with Alistair Black. To okay. be contrarian. Ooh, we, we're now all, we've spun off from our yeah. initial consensus yeah. on Matt Riddle winning. But I think this, this but, yeah. league has just turned yeah, up a notch. Yeah, yeah. But I think here, like the, the the thing is that Johnny can continue to have the the sort of heel thing not necessarily work out for him, mm -hmm. and it can drive him darker mm. and deeper. Yeah, that's true. Or and then hopefully build to maybe either a redemption where he comes back up and becomes the, the babyface he's actually meant to be, and yeah, he yeah. realizes the error of his ways, or not. I um I also think this is going to go on later than Champa Velveteen Dream. I can see Dream Champa being like third on the well, I say maybe even second on the card. Ooh. I guess I can see that with Baszler opening. I don't think we should discount a uh, a double countout or, or like a, a DQ mm -hmm. finish where yeah, they, yeah. no mm. no guy loses because they haven't had that three way match yet, have they? They have not. Which was what was originally meant for mm. the mm. Takeover Brooklyn. 100? Yes. Yeah, around that number. So if they both draw in some way and it sets up a three-way between them, that could be a nice way well, for so Gargano what if to comes out and redeem attacks, themselves. What if Champa comes out and attacks Gargano or attacks Black mm -hmm. and gives mm -hmm. him the win? Yeah. So that, let's, speaking of, let's get into it. Tommaso Champa versus the Velveteen Dream for the NXT Championship. I am stunned this is not a three-way with Lars Sullivan. Because um, that's the other side of this. is like, where does Lars factor into these storylines that we are weaving out of our brains in regards to the NXT Championship. He still, he beat Velveteen Dream on TV, so he has got a stake to be a contender. I think Vince has seen him. I think <laughs> I think they've been trying to keep him hidden, yep. but he's so big, like eventually mm. it was going to happen. Vince has seen him, seen his sexy little trunks. Uh, he's gone into it, he's like, oh, Braun, I didn't know you were down in NXT. Oh, what? You're a different Braun. Vince, oh, Vince, saw a satellite, <laughs> Vince saw a satellite photo of Florida <laughs> and could just make out Lars on the horizon. He was like, that's my guy. That's one. I want him do you, now. Do you think Vince just sits in like this? He's freaking bunker, huge. Like a sonar bunker. And he's got loads of people like yeah. tr tracking body mass. Yeah. As an ex big star. He's uh, the only person to have found Nessie and he signed her. <laughs> to a developmental contract. Yeah, to a oh, developmental, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I think Lars is kind of being phased away so he can be called up. It's interesting that he's just beaten the number one contender then. I don't watch NXT every week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am gonna. I'm gonna go with TC on this one. I don't think. I th as much as I like Velveteen Dream, it is not his time to win the NXT Championship at this point. I think it is something you want to save uh, for down the line if he if he's not getting called up. So I'm gonna say uh, Champa retains. He remains the champion. Yeah, I think I. I reckon we're probably reached consensus on this. Tommaso Ciampa retains. He's such a good heel champion. Mm -hmm. He's up there with Sammy Callahan as the best heels in the business right now, I think. And uh, yeah, like Velveteen Dream, as much as I love him, he, I, 
I don't think he's polished enough. I think he, he makes too many in-ring mistakes. Character-wise and charisma-wise, he's, he's amazing, so yeah. strong on that. It carries through, and, and people seem to overlook that stuff. But I think he needs at least another year and a half in NXT to really, really make him a finished solid product before he comes up. And now isn't... like He's not NXT championship material. Not the you look at the lineage of people who have hold it. Yeah, maybe soon, but uh, not now. I wouldn't say in the next six months either. No. Laura Blake? Champ is going to retain. Cool. But I think Gargano is going to help. Oh. I think cause I think oh. I think part I think part of his thing is that he wants to be the one to beat the big baddie. Oh, that's good. And he does not want he will not want Dream to win to win the title here. So he will come out and he will stop Dream winning. Yeah. So and so he well, can be the one to yeah. conquer Champa and win the championship down the line. I like that because like in Champa's eyes that might look like Gargano wants to reunite DIY. But in Gargano's yeah. mind, the reason why he's doing it is because well, I want to beat you. I want to destroy you, yeah. yeah. But and I want to, and I want he wants to save NXT from Champa specifically. Mm. So he wants to be like you know, it's not about making Champa lose the title. It is about keeping the belt on Champa until he gets the shot at it. That is excellent. Yeah, that is really really good. Good work, Blake. Uh, and what will likely be the main event of the show, it is War Games Undisputed Era taking on the ragtag team of Ricochet, Pete Dunne and the War Raiders. Uh, I'm going to ask Laurie Blake first. Oh, uh, yeah. Bear in mind, Undisputed. It's like it's caught you by surprise. No, I just don't it's know. It's the title I, of no, the paper. Yeah, I know. I just don't know. I just don't know. I feel like it's... I feel like it could just go either way and it would be fine. Like It's one of those weird ones where I don't think anyone comes out of this match looking weak or looking bad. Well, that's, that was the brilliance of War Games last year. Exactly, it's like Sanity yeah. didn't lose anything in that match, nor, neither did AOP from losing it. Yeah. And at the same time, Undisputed Era gained so much from it. Yeah. So I, I think, yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, do we want Undisputed Era to be two-time winners of a War Games match? Or do we want Dunn, Ricochet, who are both champions, and War Raiders, who are also... Basically, your number one contenders for the tag belts at this point. You've got to kind of guess that they'll be the next in line to get a proper title shot. I feel like they stand slightly more to lose in terms of getting a loss here, but I also feel like you just want to keep Undisputed Era looking really strong and mm. like a team. They've done a lot of sort of infighting between the other four that seems to set up the idea that they might not be able to pull it out of the bag. Yes. So, Undisputed Era? Laurie Blake going with the Put UA. a question mark next to the end. <laughs> the way your voice went up at the end. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That was a question mark. Undisputed era. There you go. That's a... Uh, yes, say. you're going <laughs> with you. Couldn't and help it. It is worth noting as well that this is going to be a traditional War Games match as opposed to WWE's version they did last year with three different teams, three trios. This is going to be four on four with uh, the Undisputed Era getting the man advantage. So I believe a traditional War Games match, they would have... The the roof. the the roof and it would have suppose, five yeah. on five. Hmm. I know they've done four on four. Okay, but traditional. Well, it's just I don't. It's, it's semantics. It's, it's not. Know. It's not Survivor Series traditional. Let's be honest. Hashtag not my war game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Davis, what do you think? Oh, I, undisputed era. Quite yeah. confidently, uh, I think like they they should do that. That's the way it should be. I love it when you have a team of arguably separately better in wrestlers but when they come together it's the unity that they don't have uh, to overcome the coherent team so that yeah, yeah Undisputed Era they're the proper faction of course they should beat Ricochet Pete Dunne and War Raiders together mm. because they've got all the experience Many, as much as I'm looking forward to this match and I really really am and I do like the War Raiders but why isn't it Moustache Mountain? I know, you've been very upset about like, this, you haven't you? A ricochet and British strong style mm. team. Considering all that great stuff you did with uh, Moustache Mountain and the Undisputed Era in the summer. Five stars, Meltzer get and this guy. <laughs> Five <laughs> stars, that match at, on, on the NXT you, yeah. show mm -hmm. uh, between Carlo Riley and Roderick Strong. And their takeover match was Moustache amazing Mountain. as well. Mm. Yep, exactly. And I, I feel like that's... I mean, it's unfortunate that they have been pulled over to the NXT UK vortex. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just the, the, the lower, story and the with Pete Dunne's involvement as well. I think that's a much nicer story with a poetic. I don't know why I said poetic. I guess it, it's a shame that it's not British Strong Style. But at mm. the same time, I can see the logic in this because you want to build up War Raiders as the next tag team championship yeah. uh, contenders. 
whereas Mustache Mountain. But they're gonna, they're likely going to lose here. So yes, how does that build them up? Because just have just have Mustache Mountain in there, and then the next it's like a next chapter after War Games. Then you just say, hey, these are new, new number one contenders. That's mm. fine. I think if they have a good showing, like if they mm. uh, decisively beat them up, then uh, they certainly earned themselves a shot. Mm. But like you, I mean, I think Undisputed Era are winning this, but due to the fact that Undisputed Era are a team and there's going to be infighting within the uh, the makeshift team of the goodies. Yeah, with Ricochet and Dunn. Exactly, there'll be likely. Ricochet and Dunn, there'll be friction, there'll be friction with them and War Raiders. I think they're essentially going to implode uh, and that will lead, then you can lead down to continue this three-way feud between Cole, Ricochet and Dunn and then move the War Raiders over to face O'Reilly and Strong mm. and then whatever Bobbles Fish is doing. Could be doing anything really. So I'm also going having his away. own heel turn on <laughs> his own mates because he's like, oh, I used to be a tag team champion. Yeah. So lastly, because we didn't want to just end it there, we wanted to add into this uh, World Cup to determine the best predictor in the world. Yes. Um, Which Andy will win <laughs> by inserting himself in at the final moment. <laughs> When we injure all our voices, <laughs> we can no longer predict. We decided to also ask bonus questions. Dun, so dun, dun. it could have been, what will be the main event? What will be this? What will be that? For NXT TakeOver shows, I feel like it should always be the same question. Which top indie <laughs> star will be in the crowd? Can I give you my prediction? Or go on, yeah, yeah you, go on. I need, I need help. I haven't thought yeah, about I this. I can't think of people who have been rumoured to... Okay, I've just seen what Luke's written down. I am going with Volta, Progress Champion, OTT Champion, Defiant Champion, the best wrestler oh. in the world today. Volta is my pick. It's a good so shot. it was Riddle at the last one. It was Keith Lee at the one before that. Yeah. Keith Lee still has yet to have a takeover show. Mm. Mm. He's barely had a match. Um, <laughs> he's he's had yeah. about 10 seconds of a match. Well, he, he's got a... It's developmental, yeah. isn't it? He's, yeah, he's got to like, prove himself. It's yeah. not like he is one of the best, most charismatic wrestlers yeah. to see live. You, you, you've got to learn yeah. the WWE, bro. <laughs> WWE you've got to learn way, the way, yeah. He's got to learn those rest holds. Oh, how, yeah. to, how to properly apply them for mm. ad breaks. That's what I want from a Keith Lee match, is rest holds. Oh, yeah. yeah not, 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 not like moonsaults off the top rope no. from a 350-pound man. Dude, you're a big guy. Neck cranks. That's your yeah. bread and butter, mate. Breathe. Work like a big man. <laughs> Breathe. Okay, Walter. Walter's a really good shout. Yeah. Pentagon and Phoenix aren't happening. Oh, they're not. Oh, happening. I think you were going to say <laughs> no, no. They're under contract. <laughs> yeah, they're with, uh, they're with Impact until the end of uh, nineteen, and a couple of other places. Well, MLW. It's tough. It's tough. It's, it's almost Chris like Jericho. You knew this story. Chris Jericho's <laughs> dressed as Pentagon. Hangman Page. Oh, oh. Laurie <laughs> Blake going with Hangman. That is an That's excellent a great shout. shout. He's to, oh no, I thought he was just behind you there, isn't he, old hangman? Mm. You've both taken the good ones. I mean, I, th I think it's going to be Walter, but I don't want to be lame and have the same prediction. It is lame. So, mm, Marty <laughs> Skrull. You're going with Marty Skrull? I thought you were going to say Matt Hardy for a second. No. no, no. The only reason I'm saying that is because I like Meltzer's reported that his contract is slightly out of step with Where everyone else's. Mm. So it's Hangman's. Hangman's already yeah. up, isn't it? Yeah. But everyone, like Bucks, Cody, uh, Kenny, their contracts with New Japan and ROH expire December 31st. Whereas I think Skull isn't a part of that. But I, I can't remember if that's actually because it's later or it's... Mm. it's I, I've lost this one. It's not going to be Skull. You're going with saying. Marty, formerly of this parish, mm. Marty yeah, Skull. I feel like they'd be much easier people to <laughs> pick it. Yeah. Like, Chelsea Green might be there. You never know. <laughs> so she's that's true, start. actually. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she is... Um, Punishment Martinez. Yeah, she's... Ah, on. that's a good... But hasn't he... He's debuted in live shows, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Punishment's a much better show. At <laughs> can least I we, change know, my, we know he's there. Can I change yeah. my Well, Punishment no, it's quite Martinez. easy, because we know all these people are there. We've seen pictures of them in the, in the training centre. Do you want Punishment? No, I've I've made my bed. I can't. That's not an out there pick. That's a... Like, he's guaranteed to be there. Yeah, but I, I just... I, I'm going to get that one wrong, deservedly so, because you both came up with better options. But that's all we've got time for for the NXT predictions. We'll have Survivor Series 1s going up tomorrow. Click the videos down here, because these two reviewed the Go Home episode of NXT, if you want to catch up with that. And, yeah, I've been Ollie Davis, El Fagador, Laurie Blake, Luke Owen, and that was Rambling.